Hey guys, Frank Rich here from MassStaticMuscle.com. In this video today, we're going to talk about the squat. Now, as you may know, or if you're new to this channel, I'm going to introduce to you um, what we're dedicated to here is teaching you an educated approach to building muscle. So we're not going to talk about the squat in terms of power lifting, or in terms of strength training, or in terms of uh, sports performance, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to address the squat um, with an intentional approach to building our quads. Now, you may be saying to yourself, the squat is not a movement to isolate the quads. Um, and I'm going to agree with you, it's not, the, it's not the most ideal movement to fully isolate them. But with a few minor tweaks to what you may be doing, you can help, um, you can better apply that to building your quads. So how are we going to do that? Well, first, let's think about what we're doing and how we're actually setting ourselves up for the squat. What you may have been told or something you may have read or had somebody teaching you throughout the years is in order to better, uh, better place tension on the quads um, with the squat, you want to have a closer or a closed footed stance. So if you think about that, they, they may tell you to get real, real close with your feet and that's going to that's gonna apply the tension to your quads. Now, foot, foot placement is going to be dependent upon our, our structure. If you're somebody with, uh, sh you know, shorter, uh, shorter femurs um, and, you know, smaller hips, yes, having a close stance would apply to you. Um, but somebody like myself, I'm, you know, blessed with pretty wide hips. I don't know if blessed is the right term, but it is how my structure is set up. So for me to fully get the depth that I need in a squat, I need to have a wider stance um, and actually think about having my knees um, and my toes drive it out. That's the only way that my hips are going to allow me to to get down without you know without impinging. So if I was if I was trying to squat like this, I mean that's about the depth that I can get. There's really not much much being accomplished with that. The so first thing we want to think about is what we're doing with our feet. So play with it a little bit. Find what's what's comfortable, what fits your mechanics, and get into the proper proper position. From there, we're gonna think about where we're placing the tension or the load on our feet. One of the most dangerous things you can do or most damaging things you can do to your knee joint is allowing them to buckle in. I see all the time, you may have seen it yourself as well. You'll see somebody get in the bottom of a squat and before they ever drive up, their knees buckle in. What that's doing is that's taking all the load, all the tension, off your muscles and applying it to those joints. Um, and as we know um, from our previous videos, what we're trying to do um, in building muscle is keep the tension, keep the load on the muscles that we're working. So to make sure, or to better assist us in not doing that, you wanna think about getting the weight on the outside of our feet. As we squat down, really focus on driving your knees out. So as we go down into the depth, we want our knees going in the direction of our toes. The best way to do that is really focusing, like I said, on keeping the weight on our heels and on the outside of our feet. Um, next thing I want to address um, is, is really the biggest thing that we need to get out of our minds and understand when it comes to, to putting the tension on our quads or using the squat to build our quads. Everybody's been saying for years, I'm sure you may have heard it before as well, is don't let your knees go over your toes. Don't let your knees go over your toes. Your knees are gonna explode. Biggest piece of misinformation, um, probably that's in the, in the muscle building world these days. Just think about kind of like the human structure, the human anatomy for a minute. Um, if our knees never went over our toes, basically we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to, to walk. Every time we take a step, our back leg, the knee is, the knee is over toe. Now I know I'm taking it to kind of the extreme here, but just keep that in mind, keep that in context. If our knees were ne never went over our toes, basically we would all be walking around with a shuffle, um, or knees would be exploding on a daily basis as people walked down the street. Like I said, I know that's pretty extreme, but just keep that context in mind. Um, what I'm gonna do here is, as I get into this next setup, is I'm actually gonna use this, this platform 
here. Um, what this is allowing me to do is um, raise my heels a little bit. Um, now this may or may not apply to you. Once again, this is gonna be dependent upon your body structure, your body's biomechanics. Um, me having, having longer femurs um, and not the greatest ankle mobility, um, I need a little assistance in getting my knees forward. Um, so by using a platform, it helps keep my heels elevated, helps my hips um, from driving back, and I can really focus on getting those knees driven forward. Um, if your gym doesn't have something like this, um, you can find one online. You know, it's, it'd probably be something that maybe you could bring to and from the gym, or even place in the gym, I'm sure other people wouldn't mind it. Um, or you could even use smaller plates, five or 10 pound plates. I think that would be perfectly okay. Just make sure you're comfortable in the balance. Um, you have good support stability shoes. I recommend something with a flat bottom. Um, a lot of people now are squatting in chucks. There's squat shoes that are out there, um, or even barefoot. Um, that's probably the best route to go if you're comfortable squatting in your socks. Um, but something that's got a flat, flat support is gonna allow you to you know, not have um, you know, a lot of instability in your feet. So I'm gonna get set up here, uh, like I said, with a slight, slight rise in, in my heel. Once again, I'm using, putting my feet in the place that's gonna allow my, my hips to open up so that I can get the depth that I truly need. Um, and like I said, with me, it's a wider stance, slow uh, toes, slightly pointed out. The first thing I'm gonna think about as I descend is breaking at the knee, um, driving those knees forward. I don't want my hips rolling down, rolling back. I want my knees driving forward over my toes. And my depth is gonna be as far as I can go down before my hips roll under. What we're looking for is we're looking to get our hamstring to our calf. Um, you know, we talk a lot about muscles lengthening and muscle shortening. A fully shortened um, quad in a squat is when your hamstring is on your calf. So I got pretty good depth here. I can't go too, too much lower just due to my, my range of motion um, without my hips rolling under. I don't, I don't want, um, I don't want a butt wink. I don't want my, my hips rolling down because that's going to then take the load, take the pressure and uh, apply it onto my lower back. Okay. So we've addressed foot placement. We've addressed knee movement. Just to continue on the knee a little bit further. Um, if you think about the squat, it's a multi-joint movement in order for us to get depth, in order for us to squat, there's two joints involved in the movement. You have your hip joint and your, your knee joint. Um, just remember, just keep in mind that the joint that moves the greatest distance carries the majority of the load. Say that again. The joint that moves the greatest distance carries the majority of the load. So if we want to squat for, for quad development, we want our knees doing the bulk of the movement, the majority of the distance, okay? Our hips are gonna move, like it's, 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 it's unavoidable. But if we can focus on the majority of the movement coming at the knee, that's gonna keep that tension, that load on the muscles that are around the knee joint, which are gonna be our quads, okay? Um, next thing we can dress a little bit is just the bar placement or what type of weight that you're using. Um, I hear a lot of people talk about front squats being the best, <coughs> uh, excuse me, being the best for targeting the quads. Could be true, um, but that's after you've mastered the first two. So if you're not comfortable doing a front squat at first, master your feet placement, master getting your knees driving forward and really getting that depth and that, um, that movement down uh, before you think about putting a bar across the front of your shoulders because that can um, be dangerous if you're, if you're not you know, stable, if you're not structured. Um, from there, play with you know, what, 
um, what type of squat bar or squat bar placement is best for you. Um, I have safety bar, um, it's by Lead FTS, it's a yoke bar. I just feel this is just what works best um, for my overall structure. Can't place it across the front. I will do front squats. I have them written in all my programs. I have my clients doing them as long as they're um, you know, structurally able to, but we always master the basic mechanics first. So with the yoke bar here, okay, get set up, get stable. Once again, foot placement is the first. Okay, we're gonna start at the bottom. Everything needs a solid foundation before we can do anything. Once our feet are in placement, breaking at the knee, driving down, really driving those knees forward and driving them out. We don't want any buckle in. Okay guys, like I said, is the squat gonna be the best movement to fully isolate the quads? No, that's probably going to be a leg extension just because you don't have your hips involved in the movement. But you can't, you can't build muscle doing simply just one movement. So you need to have um, integrated movements into your training. Squat is a great, great movement. Granted, you have the basic understanding and mechanics down. So master it, get your feet placement set, Get your intentional um, approach with driving your knees forward. Don't be concerned about things blowing up um, the minute your knee crosses over your toe. It's not gonna happen. Start applying these principles, guys. Um, and in time, you're definitely gonna see uh, your quads start to grow. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Drop a comment down below uh, for something you'd like to see in the future. Um, if you haven't yet, make sure to click on the link in the description box to pick up the four basic principle report on building aesthetic muscle. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll talk to you soon.